Good morning, and welcome to the gathering. We're glad that you are here with us. We're glad for you to be with us online as well. Uh, it is just a great day. God is good. All, all the time. time. Oh, I am so happy. That's good. And all the time. God, God is, is good. good. Yeah, you are, you are right on the money. You have all been prepared. That's awesome. That's good. Amen. Uh, you will notice that we have some changes that we have made, and so we're going to do some announcements right now. If you look in the inside part of this bulletin, if you see it at home, if you are interested in the trip to the Holy Land, okay, it will have a meeting on March the 15th, but it will be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, not 10 in the morning, but 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we had a scheduled change uh, at the last minute. Uh, church council will be at 10 o'clock, and then so we'll have a 2 o'clock on that. Um, you see the rest of the announcements, the welcome back, the office hours, all those things. We have some changes here. As you saw on the screen, uh, at 925, hopefully we'll, around that time, we'll have a countdown, okay? Uh, the countdown is just to help everybody. We're hopefully, maybe soon, we'll go back to having fellowship time in between services, Okay, that's a possibility. And we're hoping that maybe possibly we'll have that countdown on the screens out there so that it helps out. And so that's a little more technical stuff. If you have an offering today or a do the dollar offering, uh, you notice that there was no table back there. And the reason being is, is that we'd like for you to bring the, the, your offering uh, to the communion table or the altar table here. All right, there are two gray baskets right there on the kneeling benches. If you would, when you come in, if you'd bring that in there, when we f open up completely, we will try to, we'll do some, some different things, okay? Uh, but right now, that's where we're going to place our, our offering there, and so you can do that at the end of the service if you haven't already done so, okay? Now, Will, if you are able to turn that camera this way so everybody can see, <laughs> if you look over there on that wall there, okay, that is a new ministry that we have. We have put this thing together a long time ago, a year ago, yes, um, but we, we do now have it here, all right? Um, this is our prayer wall. It's based off of the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. All right. Um, if you can come up and put your prayer request, fold it a couple of different times. Some of the cracks are easier to put stuff in than than the others, but just find a crack because uh, with this cardstock, it'll open up a little bit, kind of clamp it in there. Um, but we've already had a couple people use this. Once you're done and you use the pens, if you would take a squirt of the hand sanitizer, uh, just to, so we can keep everything safe there. This ministry is, is something that we have done over the last couple of places that I have served, all right? Um, I got the idea from the youth group at Godfrey, Illinois. Um, they put their prayer wall together. The Gideons came in and took pictures of it, and they have shared it with different churches. Um, I've had a work team come in. And they took pictures of it, and they have one in their church now. Um, it's, it's just been an exciting ministry. What we'd like for you to do is, if you have a prayer request and you'd like to do this, we're gonna, we open this to the entire church. Um, come in, write your prayer request down, fold it up, stick it in a crack. Uh, you may take some time to spend in prayer here or at the altar rails, uh, for however you want to do that. But when you come in here, just... Ever so often, I know a lot of you come in doing different things within the church. Uh, if you pass by the, the, the prayer wall, just lift up a prayer for those who's got their things in there. Uh, it's all anonymous. There's, there's, we're we're going to hold complete confidentiality. We ask that you do not open the cards up and look at them to see what they're praying for. No, God knows what they are. Uh, and then sometime later on in this year, uh, we will take those prayer requests, put it in a bucket, and we will light them on fire as a prayer that they are been consumed. And it's just a just kind of a neat ministry. So that is available to you. Do you have to do it? No, you don't have to do it. It's just an opportunity for you to share a prayer and to pray for others. Okay? All right, so there you have that. Um, you'll see that the order is a little bit different. So we're going to go right into our joys. Do you have a joy this morning that you need to share? William? 
I do. William does too. Take your mask down so you can talk. He may make it to Clemson. <laughs> Just not really sure about that. But yes, he, he's uh, got a master's program at Clemson, and uh, we had a big plan for the, for the asking, and he had the ring and all that stuff, and then the snowstorm hit. So we had to drop back 20 and punt, and we, he did, and it was awesome, and she was, you know, bawling her eyes out, and it, it just was so cool, all right? Uh, and I was sitting on the top level of our, of our house and asked if she said yes, because this is really going to be hard if it, she didn't, so, but that, it's all right, she did, so, yes? My joy is that we're all here in, in person worship yes. is yes. back, and that's the yes. biggest joy. Amen, amen. Yes. Any other? Yes, Joe. Sheree and I both had both shots. Sheree and you had both shots. All right. Good. Good deal. Good deal. That no, that's that's something, um, because I'm, you know, if they go by age, I'm low man on the totem pole. So. You're not that young. Oh. <laughs> I'm still low man on the totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all right. Who else has a joy? You got a joy that you want to share? Anybody? All right. Yep. Yeah. Karen? Um, not on my brother this year. I get to go the end of the month to see my grandson's second birthday. Oh, yes, yes. So at the, at, at the end of the month, you get to go see your grandson's mm -hmm. second birthday. All right. Well, you give on some praise. If you, if you know anything about her history and stuff, it's, yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. That, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and if you are friends with my wife or I on Facebook, you know that at January 1st, um, we have a new grandson, um, and the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a joy and concern. The joy is, is that it's just adorable. If you knew a lot of the history, which I don't have time to go into, um, it, it's just awesome. And, and they, they are now having, uh, getting a new house, a little bigger house, and so this is awesome. It's all new changes and great things. Um, the kids got a mohawk. If you've ever seen, yeah, his hair stands straight up. Uh, we figured that if we got a bucket of water, turned him upside down, we could mop the floor as much <laughs> hair as he got on his head. Um, but there has been rumor by different people that he looks like me. Now we just walked into the concern part, all right? <laughs> so, so hopefully that will be taken care of. So it'd be all right, it'd be all right. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, bless his heart. Uh, do you have a concern this morning you want to share? Just give me your name, a name that, that you want to pray for. Yes, Jody? Reese and Carol Clark. Reese and Carol Clark. Okay. Got one. Ellen? Mike Bryant. And Mike Bryant. Mm -hmm. Marilyn? At Marilyn, she had had a little fall, and, and so you want to pray for her. Luke Sparks. Luke Sparks. John and Debbie Marino. John and Debbie Marino. Susan, did you have one? You want me to come back back to you? John and Linda Stone. John and Linda Stone. Let's let's say uh, unspoken request. Would that be better? Okay, let's do that. Unspoken request. All right. Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen. I'm sorry, I didn't look at you guys. You guys, I'm good. All right. Well, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Almighty and amazing God, it is good to be in your house this morning. To worship and praise you, to celebrate who you are. To look back at our lives and to see where you have intervened, where you have been present, where you have given discipline, and where we've seen your peace. Many things in our lives, Lord, that block that. Trying to find hard to find it, it really is. But we know that you are faithful. We know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We know by faith that your son, Jesus Christ, is our Lord and Savior. We know that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
we know that you have seen your people through some heavy and hard times throughout the course of history. And Father, we ask for it again today. We've seen the numbers. We've seen the reports from CDC. And they're dropping. There's even more and more truth coming out. And Father, I pray by your mighty hand that this COVID-19 will be a thing of the past. Father, I pray for the small businesses, people in our communities that may have had some great adjustments and the folks that work there. Father, we pray that they'd be back online. Doing their thing. Surviving. But doing more than surviving. Growing. Father, we pray for Christ of the Hills United Methodist Church. The people that are on our prayer concerns. For those concerns that have been lifted up this morning, O oh Lord, we pray for your healing hand to touch them. Father God, we ask that your holy presence would just saturate this place. We pray all these things in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. He who taught us to pray, and let us pray this together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're here. Jesus is with us. Can you look around and just say welcome to each other? Welcome. 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 Now, can you say welcome, Jesus? Welcome, Jesus. Jesus is here. We've been opening our eyes, we've been listening, we have been thinking about these concerns we have. Now it's time to not just open our eyes, but to open up our hearts to the good Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. One, two. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Why don't you stand up in honor of the Lord? Come on. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. We want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. To see you high lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. Sing with us. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. To 
You may be seated. But keep your heart and thoughts high. Think about Jesus just a minute. If it wasn't for him, where would we be? You know, we can look at politics today. We can say, I believe that, or I don't believe that. But there's one thing you can always believe in and always keep on your hearts and minds. We can count on our Lord. That's right. Our Lord is the one who loves us more than any, any politician, any family member. He made us. It says in the Bible, in the book of John, in the beginning was the Word. And to make it a paraphrase kind of quickly, all things were made by Him. In Christ alone, everything is our hope. of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled and striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in this babe, the gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. Thank you, Lord, for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. crown his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth praise god in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost his grip on me for I am his, and he is mine, caught with the precious blood of Christ. You know this one. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. That is true on Christ the solid. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. You know, I was looking up the title of this other psalm in the Bible to see exactly where it could be found. Very few places use the term sanctuary in the Bible. 
But there are a lot of things that are used, a lot of words that talk about how we have a place to go. Yes, we have a place to go here, but anywhere we go, Christ can be there with us if we let him reside in our own sanctuary of our heart. Will you let the Lord reside in your sanctuary? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. If you don't want to sing out loud, sing it into your mask. people of God said, Amen. 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 Give them a second to step on down here. Passage of scripture comes from Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning in verse 1 and going to verse 3. Romans 12, verses 1 through 3. And here is the word of the Lord. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you bow your heads in prayer? Almighty and gracious God, I pray that you will rescue me from me. Lord, I ask that you would pour into my heart and around me through me and with me, O Lord, your Holy Spirit, that it may be so that the words I share be your words, and all glory be given to you and none to me. It's in your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we have over the course even of the videos, we've been going over a called a soul detox series. It's based on a book by Craig Groeschel, and, and we are on number four. The title of this is Germ Warfare. Okay? The premise of this, as we talked about it earlier, is the fact that when we get to the beginning of the year, and so many of us do the resolution thing, and nine times out of ten, they are resolutions that deal with our physical health. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to do this. And don't raise your hand, but how many of you are, have a resolution like that and you're still on it? That's what I thought. <laughs> no, I had you not to raise your hand. Uh, but yeah, it does. It happens. It happens. Okay? 
uh, Carl Bernstein said this. He said, for the first time, the weird and the stupid and the coarse are becoming our cultural norm, even our cultural ideal. Pretty harsh words. Pretty harsh words. And we may not think about some things until someone brings it up. For example, and, and I think I've shared this before, have you seen the arrow and the FedEx sign? Yeah. Now you cannot not see it. Now, do you know what this is? It's a picture of the KFC. All right? And supposedly some six-year-old kid looked at her mother and said, Mommy, why did they draw the face but not the rest of the body? They just give them a stick figure. And now you cannot not see that. It's, I mean, you see it. It's everywhere. And so many things are, are there. And, and you, 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 you get accustomed to them. And we are appraised of the germ warfare going on around us. We have the hand sanitizers. We've got the Lysol. You've probably sprayed and scrubbed things down, the antibacterial. I mean, you, we have, we've all done it. When they started wiping down the, the, the gas pumps, I'm going, okay, yeah, there you are. How many feel as if at the end of the day when you're taking a shower that you just cleaned the shower with what came off of your hands? We've used so much. We're accustomed to this. We do this because of the safety factor. But can you remember the day that we drank out of the garden hose? I was so proud of my daughter because I didn't know this. I didn't think she'd ever do this. And, and she goes, I've done that. I went, really? You just, I mean, jumped a level of respect in my life. Because there's a couple of things that you've got to do when you drink out of a garden hose. Number one, you've got to let it run because, A, it's going to be hot when it comes out of that hose. And number two, it may have something crawling out of the end of that hose. But once it's ran for a while, you get a cool drink of water. Amen. Do I have a witness in the house? Yeah. You remember making mud pies? Playing in the mud? Do you remember shaking a person's hand? Oh, how awesome. But we've, we've gotten this fact of this germs and stuff. We've, we understand it on, oh, how we fight them. But see, that's physically. How about spiritually? See, we get real upset. You know you spent that Saturday morning and you have scrubbed, cleaned, waxed, dusted every inch of your house. People could come in and eat off your floor. Really no comment needed, but that's okay. That's okay. I, you know what? If the video could hear that, that would be awesome. That would be really good. I mean, you've done such a great job, and then someone walks in, a company came in, and they walked from your front door to the kitchen where you were, and you went out and went, uh-huh, and you saw the tracks. All right? You're going to get that culprit. You're going to let them have it, because you spend all that time. We do, don't we? We get all of that outside stuff clean, but what about the inside? Second question is, do we get upset when it gets a little dirty? Hmm. That's what we're going to talk about today. We are called as people of God to be a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So how is this done? See, if we are talking about detoxing our soul then we have to look at those things that may affect our spiritual judgments and journey. There are things all around that attack our spiritual life that you have, over time, come to think it as normal or really not that big of a deal. How about those spiritual germs? What are they? Let's take, for example, the movies. 
How many people like going to movies or love to go on before the pandemic, love to go to the movies? Yeah, yeah. I remember the first movie I saw, The Apple Dumpling Gang. Tim Conway, oh, good stuff. Yeah. I think we paid a dollar to get in. And 50 cents for the popcorn, something, something like that. It was, it was down there. But what about the movies of the day? And you sit there, and you're in the middle of them, and you get wrapped up, don't you? It starts happening. I remember when we showed the movie from the Hendrix Brothers, Facing the Giants. And I had 80, 90-year-old people sitting in that basement on those chairs, and all of a sudden they started getting up when that football player was coming down the field, and they were yelling at the screen, Go! 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 And they were just getting into it. Don't we? We get into it. But there is a place called the Dove Foundation. You can find it out online. And you can type in your movie that you want to go see. You know what the Dove Foundation does? It breaks down that movie. It can tell you exactly how many curse words and different things are in that movie. I would encourage you to go online and check it out and put in a movie you probably going to be surprised how many times certain words came across. And we've accepted it. We've let it go by. We laugh hysterically. And when you do that research, you're kind of going, wait a minute, what's going on? See, we have a double standard. Whether we want to realize it or not, we do have a double standard. We come into church, we're looking pristine, we're looking clean, we're looking all that we need to be. We want to look holy. And then it's those other days of the week that we may be in an area where we're just bombarded with spiritual germs. Each image and message that we digest may be a germ that makes us spiritually ill. But some of us may say, what is wrong with this? Or have seen this enough times and saying, wait a minute, it's, it's not, never bothered me before. See, it's not the words that have changed, but rather our standards. It's not the words that have changed, but it's our standards. I've given you this example before. My father and I talked one time, and I was looking at the new Montgomery Ward catalog. How many people remember them? Yeah, yeah, because we were kids, and we'd sit there, and we'd go to the toy section. We were looking at that. But to get to the toy section, you had to come across a part of that, which was ladies' lingerie. And my father said to me one time, he goes, when I was a kid, that was pornography. That was pornography. 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 7 says this. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. There was a movement a few years back. WWJD, do you remember those words, those letters stand for? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? It kind of gave you that attitude. Would you want God to see you where you are and what you are doing? But see, it's kind of like a steak being seared on the grill. Do y'all hear it? Can you hear it in your imagination? Can you smell it in amongst that mask? You can put it in that image, just that searing, that steak. On page, I, I like this, what he wrote in 180, on page 189. You will be faced with many situations that may not be very obvious. Let your conscience be your guide. If you don't feel bad about it, why not do it? But this may not always work. 1 Timothy 4, 2 shows us that your conscience can be seared. What it says is, such teachings come through hypocritical Christ liars whose consequences have been seared as with a hot iron. See, it's just like that juicy steak. Can you imagine it? 
got all that red and everything, got a little bit of layer of marbling in it, and you stick it, I know, I'm making you hungry, and you stick it on that, that grill, and you hear that sizzle, you hear that steam come up, all right, and then you walk away for the next hour and a half, what's your steak going to look like? If you'd have taken, yeah, yeah, we, we went past from, from beef jerky, to something that you could drive a na- with a nail, a hammer. It's not the steak. It's not the tender steak that you have had before. But what is the difference if we sit there and we watch some of the things or listen to some of the things and for that hour and a half we have been bombarded with certain things? Are we the same? What happens We become cultural chameleons. To blend in, conform, and become like the culture around you, if you don't want to disappear into the world's culture, you must be willing to stand out. 1 Peter says this, For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. Now, it says also for us to be a living holy sacrifice. Be, Be holy. If you look at the Greek, that's hagios. Okay? But what that means is to be set apart. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22. For er, test everything, hold on to the good, avoid every kind of evil. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. We must learn to be able to stand out. Now, we discern those doing a balancing act of the freedom we have in Christ with the clear standards God gives us for being a part of this world, but not inundated with it. To be in this world, but not of this world. Now, Many folks would take this and going, okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Pastor Steve, he's going to give us a list of things that we should not do. No, I'm not. That's legalism. That's legalism. Folks, what I want you to have is a relationship with Christ. But you mean I can play euchre with the ladies on Thursday afternoon and still have a relationship with God? Yes. Should you? I don't know. Can I still walk into certain establishments and have a relationship with God? Yes. Should you? I don't know. What are you being contaminated with? Brothers and sisters, I used to go to coffee hour at the Lions Club at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I found out I could stop people in mid-joke. What do you want to be inundated with? What are you being placed on? It's talking about relationship. Relationship. So how do we know? How do we know that we probably shouldn't be in this area? Ask yourself three things. Number one, am I being entertained by sin? If that answer is yes, maybe you shouldn't do it. Number two, is this pleasing to God? If it isn't. Should you be doing it? And this, does this lure me away, lure, L-U-R-E, lure me away from Christ? If you believe that these, there's nothing wrong in the midst of all these cultural influences, you may have a distorted lens. You may have a distorted lens. The author was talking about the camera system that he was using. And I've heard this before. Uh, It's called a a white balance. 
And what they do is they put up a, a, a white piece of paper in front of the camera, and what that allows the camera to do then is to determine what colors are being coming in. And maybe we are distorted. There's a need to replace cultural germs with life-giving habits that restore a clean soul. But change, who wants change? How many of your how many of you are still using the same kind of soap detergent, laundry detergent and stuff that your mama used? Are you really? Bless your heart. Well, yeah, Tide's been around for 80, 860 years. I mean, it was... It's, but some of the stuff, we've changed. Why? Because it cleans better or it does different things. We've changed those things. Now, some of the stuff we do in our natural act, activity, we've changed. How many still type on a regular old-fashioned typewriter? Because that is the true test of biblical method. Seek and ye shall find. But how many, how many even talk, type on the electric typewriter? Man, I thought that was something. I went back to my high school. Went back to see my old typing teacher and coach. He was the same person. And there wasn't an old-fashioned typewriter anywhere in there. There wasn't even an electric typewriter anywhere. All there was was keyboards. We progress in our things, don't we? If we change to get the physical clean, what do we need to do to change the spiritual? Romans 12, verse 2, and this is, comes out of the message, and I liked what it said. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. So we're called to be holy. We're called to be a living sacrifice. And if you just got just gut-wrenched on us right now. Are you there? Are you there? If the answer to that question is, well, maybe, then do something about it. If the answer to that question is no, do something about it. And if you want to spend time after the worship service, being praying here, praying at your seats, putting a prayer up on the wall, do it. Grabbing me and saying, Pastor, I need to pray. I want to be clean. I got too much in me that's not right. And even a little bit can cause that. Will you bow your heads in prayer? Almighty and gracious God, we just thank you. Thank you for this time together. Father, search our hearts as we close this time of worship together. And let us be right with you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We want to thank you for being in worship today. Amen? It's good to be back. We're going to leave you with this. Don't want you to leave. I want you to sing along. I want you to just pray and praise this is called My Life is in You, Lord. Let that be our prayer to God every day. One, two, three, four.